If you could spend 24 hours with anyone who ever lived, who would you choose? 24 hours with anyone who ever lived, who would you choose to, to walk with? Now, I'm not talking about someone just that, well, they have celebrity status, so you'd like to, uh, to hang out with them, or, or someone that you, you miss very much and, and would just like to, to spend a few more hours with them, but, but someone that you might seek out their, their advice, uh, their wisdom, you know, helping to give direction to your life. Who, who might that one person out of, uh, you know, who, whoever lived, who might that be? I want you to turn to, to a person around you and share who, who that would be for you, just real quickly. Did anyone choose a parent? Uh, uh, maybe a grandparent? Um, it, anyone else that want to give me a shout out here of someone that you chose? Jesus, uh, we're in church. That's, that's a good answer. But, um, you know, and the thing is, any answer that you give of someone you want to spend 24 hours with um, would be theoretical except the answer of Jesus. And, and that is because Jesus said that when he left, you know, he was going to send his Holy Spirit. The, the Spirit of Christ would come and dwell in the lives of believers. So if, if we are a follower of Christ, then, then that means the Holy Spirit is present in our lives. And because the, the presence, because the Holy Spirit is present in our lives, then it's as if Christ is walking with us each and every day. Now, today is a day in the church year called Pentecost. You may be familiar with Christmas as being the day that we celebrate the coming of, of Jesus into this world, or Easter, the day that we celebrate his resurrection from the dead. But Pentecost is a, is a day in the church year in which we recognize the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so as we think about the coming of the Holy Spirit and what does that look like in our lives, you know, one of the one of the best examples that I could think of to, to illustrate what it means to, to live with the Holy Spirit in, in our lives actually comes from, uh, from a movie that we recently watched at home of Les Mis. You know, maybe one that many of you are, are familiar with. I know that you sang several out of Les Mis the other night at your concert. How, how many of you have seen Les Mis? Uh, most of you and several of you probably out here as well. You know, now, it was, is not a Christian movie. You know, it, it's a movie that uh, you know, takes place in, in the early 1800s around the time of the French Revolution. It's about a, a group of people that are, are fighting for their freedom. But I believe that there's a character in, in that movie that illustrates for us what the power of the Holy Spirit can do our, in our lives. And, and that is the uh, the main character of Jean Valjean. You know, and it's an issue that he has been sent away to prison, you know, forced to do hard labor for, I believe, nine years because he stole a piece of bread. Now, stealing a piece of bread w was not right, but it seems that his punishment for his crime was, was a bit extreme. When he was released from prison, he had no one to help him. He had no place to go. He ended up in a monastery where a priest gave him a meal and a place to stay. But in the middle of the night, he gathered up some valuables around the, the monastery, stole them, and, and took off. Well, he was caught and he was brought back to, to the priest that uh, they had caught him having stolen the, the things from the monastery. But the, monastery, the, but the priest said, no, he didn't steal them. I gave those to him. He offered him forgiveness at that point so he would not have to, to return to, to prison. And, and not only that, the, the priest went a, a step further and, and uh, kind of the, the idea of Jesus saying when someone needs a shirt, don't just give them the, the shirt off your back, but, but also give them your coat as well. He said, oh, not only did I give him those things, but he forgot to take these candlesticks as well. He yet gave him even more valuable things. Now, 
It doesn't talk about the Holy Spirit in the, in the movie, but I believe that there's evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit in, in John's life at that point. Because the next scene is him standing before a, a crucifix of Christ, broken, and I believe that he's been convicted of his sin and, and repents of his, his sin at, at that point. And what happens when we repent of our sins, when we ask Christ into our heart, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in the life of every believer. Now, we don't always respond to to the leading of of the Holy Spirit, and and not that John did it perfectly at every point in, in the movie, but yet I saw evidence of him responding to the Holy Spirit in powerful and miraculous ways. Eight years passed, and uh, he went from being destitute to the point that I believe he was mayor of his town and, and seemed to be a, a business owner, had several people working for him. And so his life had, had turned around dramatically. God had blessed him in, in many ways. You know, there was a, a woman who was, was destitute. She was not able to care for her daughter. Her daughter was being cared for somewhat of a... Uh, in, someone caring for her like a a foster child. But the mother had to send money for the care of her daughter every month. And so what she did was she made some terrible sacrifices, terrible personal sacrifices, made some poor moral decisions, but she did it in order to, to care for her daughter. And Jean took her under his wing and had mercy on her and, and cared for her. He even sought out where it was that her, her daughter was living and, and went and, and kind of ransomed the daughter and, and continued to provide and, and care for her. It would seem that the, the captain of the guard was also seeking after Jean, trying to, to, to track him down with the intent of taking him back to, to prison. And, and on several occasions... Jean was in a position that he could have done the captain of of the guard in. He could have gotten rid of him. And and I must confess, as I watched the movie, I wanted him to to get rid of him, you know, so that his life would would be more more peaceful and and he would not uh, be facing so much danger. But I believe that it was the power of the Holy Spirit that had gotten a hold of, of Jean's life that caused him not to, to act according to you know, what our, our fleshly desires or fleshly judgments might do. Because he regularly showed mercy. He regularly showed grace. He, he regularly showed forgiveness. A man who was so bitter, was so angry when he was released from prison, had been transformed. And I believe that transformation came by a relationship with Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit living in him. The Holy Spirit convicted him of his sin. The Holy Spirit revealed to him the righteousness and love of Christ and directed him that it was then his job to make a difference in the world. Well, as we talk about this being the day of Pentecost, the day of celebrating when it was the the Holy Spirit came upon the, those first believers in, in Jerusalem. You know, Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit. Jesus talked about when he left, he would send the, the Holy Spirit and what the purpose of the Holy Spirit would be. In John chapter 16, verse 8, Jesus said, When the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. The job of the Holy Spirit is to convict us of sin. Now, for one who has never put their, their faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit does not permanently dwell within you at that point, but there are times when the Holy Spirit may come near and the Holy Spirit may convict you of recognizing that you need to Repent of your sin. You, you need to, to ask Christ into your life. That, that's one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit. Now, there may be some people that you know in your life that they think it's their responsibility to convict you of your sin, but it's not their job. It's the job of the Holy Spirit. Now, for those who have put their faith in Christ, 
The Holy Spirit dwells within you. And the Holy Spirit's job, or one of the Holy Spirit's jobs, is still to convict you of sin. You know, at the point that I became a Christian, I did not become perfect at that point. And and God did not reveal to me all of my sin because I would have been without hope had He revealed to me all of my sin. But it's an issue that gradually over time, you know, God continues through the power of the Holy Spirit to reveal sin in my life that I need to to confess, things that I I need to change so that I might be more Christ-like. You know, the second thing that Jesus said the Holy Spirit did, you know, first was convict us of our sin, and second, convict us of righteousness. And the idea of convicting us of righteousness is to show us who Jesus is and how it is that we can be more like Him, to, to be more loving. So on the one hand, as we are convicted of sin, it's an issue of what are we to leave behind. As we are convicted of righteousness, it's how it is that we can live to be more like Jesus. And and the third thing that it says is to convict us of judgment. Recognizing that, that there is a time in which we will have to give account before God of, of how it is that we have, have lived our lives, how we have made a difference in the world in which we live. You know, I, I believe that as the Holy Spirit is present in, in the lives of believers, the Holy Spirit continues to convict us of sin, continues to point us in the direction of Christ, and continues to challenge us of how we can make a difference in the world in which we live for Christ's sake. Even though the Holy Spirit lives in the life of of each and every believer, it doesn't necessarily mean that that we're always aware of what the Holy Spirit is saying, that we're always aware of His promptings, or maybe sometimes we are aware and we ignore it. Well, I believe that um, this morning... You know, some of you may be asking the, the question, if the Holy Spirit lives in my life, then how can I experience the fullness of God's Holy Spirit day by day? And first, the first way that I believe that we experience God's fullness in our life day by day is through prayer and confessing our need. God spoke through the, the prophet Jeremiah saying, call on me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. When we are open to God's truth, God's truth will be revealed and breathed into our lives through the the power of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, we should ask to to experience the fullness of God's Spirit in, in our life. You know, as a believer, the Holy Spirit is present in your life, but you need to be willing to to receive, to to be open to whatever it is that the Holy Spirit may be prodding or or guiding or or challenging. And then thirdly, simply being open to receiving whatever it is that God has for you. You know, we talk about the day of Pentecost being a, a day, a particular day in time when, when the Holy Spirit came. But I believe that uh, when it comes to us as believers today, living in the power of the Holy Spirit, it is a, a daily thing. It's a daily part of our journey. First of all, confessing our need for God's Holy Spirit to guide us. You know, opening ourselves to whatever God has for us and then being willing being willing to respond to the Spirit's promptings. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the ways that it brings conviction and and challenge within our lives. Lord, forgive us for those times and, and those ways in in which we turn a deaf ear to to your Holy Spirit. Lord, even in this day, as your Spirit is is stirring within our hearts and minds and, and our conscience, 
There may be some things that we need to to confess and, and release into your care and to ask for your forgiveness. And Lord, as we seek your, your forgiveness, may you help us to be more Christ-like in, in showing your unconditional love, your mercy, and, and your grace, even in times that, that it may seem difficult or impossible. And Lord, as we make ourselves available and responsive to your Holy Spirit day by day, may you use us to make a difference in the world in which we live for your sake. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.